Cyanide is a fast-acting lethal poison. It was used as a chemical warfare agent for the first time in World War I by France. Trace amounts of cyanide is found in nature and in products we use or eat. There are two forms of cyanide, a gas such as hydrogen cyanide or a solid such as sodium cyanide or potassium cyanide. Cyanide binds with very high affinity to the ferric ion in cytochrome oxidase A3 within the mitochondria. Therefore, cyanide inhibits aerobic respiration and ATP synthesis. Keep in mind that the production of pyruvate is continued by glycolysis, which is eventually converted to lactate. This causes acidosis due to the increasing levels of lactate and hydrogen ions. Following an acute exposure, the most commonly affected organs are the ones that require oxygen the most, the brain and the heart. The onset of symptoms following inhalational exposure is immediate. Mild exposure to hydrogen cyanide gas causes restlessness, anxiety, dyspnea, and headache. While higher concentrations of hydrogen cyanide gas cause loss of consciousness, seizures, and cardiac dysarrhythmias. The characteristic skin color of a cyanide poison patient is cherry red due to the reduced consumption of oxygen and elevated venous oxygen content. The first step in people suspected of cyanide poisoning is decontamination. People exposed to hydrogen cyanide gas require removal of clothing and washing of their skin with soap and water. Cardiac monitoring and advanced cardiac life support protocols should be followed. Treatment starts with good supportive care, using 100% oxygen and crystalloids. The administration of cyanide antidotes should begin as soon as possible. Hydroxycobalamin is the first-line therapy for cyanide poisoning. So how does it work? Hydroxycobalamin binds to cyanide, removes it from the cytochrome oxidase, and forms cyanocobalamin. Cyanocobalamin is then eliminated via the kidneys. The adult dose of hydroxycobalamin is 5 grams IV over 15 minutes. A second dose of 5 grams IV may be repeated once if the patient did not get any better. The pediatric dose is 70 mg per kg for a maximum dose of 5 grams IV over 15 minutes. Note that hydroxycobalamin causes reddish discoloration of the skin and the mucous membranes. Hydroxycobalamin is the first-line therapy in cyanide poisoning if exposure involves fire, smoke, or any other potential source of carbon monoxide poisoning. Nitrites have significant side effects such as hypotension and the development of excessive methemoglobinemia, which will further decrease oxygen delivery in case of concomitant carbon monoxide poisoning. Sodium thiosulfate enhances the activity of rhodonase, an enzyme that catalyzes the transfer of sulfate from sodium thiosulfate to cyanide, forming thiocyanate. Thiocyanate is then excreted by the kidneys. Keep in mind that sodium thiosulfate should be used as sole therapy if there is concern for concomitant carbon monoxide exposure if hydroxycobalamin is unavailable. If this video helped you out, help me out and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see more videos like this one, click the like button. And before I let you go, would you be interested in a video that is a cyanide toxicity case study? Let me know in the comments down below. And until next time, stay wholesome.